How is he? Amadi, it's a simple electrocution and knocked him out. Could wake up any time now. We'll just have to wait and see. Could he die? Oh, someday I'm sure he will, but I don't think this is what's going to do it. What you working on there? The sample Amadi collected while he was being electrocuted. The device really is about 8,500 years old. What? There's some sort of device that's 8,500 years old? Is that what he was doing in the mines? Wait, didn't you know the ambassador said... Didn't the mayor send you? I just heard Amadi was hurt and decided to come see what was going on. Glad I did. Please, forget I said anything. Or, or wait, let's say I'm using you as my messenger so communication section can't listen in. That might work. Go tell her I sent you to tell her I confirmed the age. Oh, and, uh, here, give her these preliminary results, too. Sure, I'll be the postman. I suppose there's worse jobs. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 9, Maneuvers. How are you holding up today, Salish? Hungry. Never been so hungry. They say that'll pass soon. You actually don't stay hungry as you starve. Your body should start burning through fat instead of seeking food. When I die, it'll be all your fault for not letting me eat those pies that would have given me a few more days of fat to burn. You've got water now, right? Yeah, I managed to tap the cooling system. Should have thought of that myself. Not much fun rationing myself to half a liter a day, though. It'll be worth it. We've got some ideas in motion over here. But nothing that'll actually save my life yet. We're working on those details. We're close. And if the plans fail, then I'll have drawn out my suffering for nothing. Don't talk like that. I was considering spending the rest of my life with this ship. Just not this way. So I guessed right. You were planning to volunteer. With no consideration for me, or anyone else who loves you. We'd still have been able to talk for a while. With huge time lags for maybe a couple months before we'd be out of range? Is that your ideal marriage? Well, get used to the time lags. It's only two-thirds of a second lag now, but by tomorrow it'll be getting annoying. If I'm still out here in a week, it'll be downright maddening. Don't try to change the subject, Salish. I'll think about what you've said. We'll talk later. Okay, close it off. Done, Chief! This low gravity since the ship testing started's been fun. So this is how it used to be all the time back in the day? Yeah, having the floor and ceiling trade places hasn't been convenient. But I'd almost forgotten how nice it is not to have a tenth of a G holding me down all the time. Enjoy it while you can. I hope we'll be accelerating toward Peter soon. I figure we'll need to place a couple of engines at least five kilometers away to impart enough angular momentum for a quick spin. Any thoughts on fuel lines? 
I was looking at the map, and we have an old ore processing station six kilometers southeast. If the lines there are intact, fitting an engine adapter shouldn't be too difficult. Good thinking, Tojo. Do you think there's a chance to save him, I mean? I don't know. I just know we've got to do everything possible. If we can get the engines and the fuel lines ready tomorrow, we can turn over the next day and we'll catch up with him pretty quick. It'll be just a matter of figuring out how to achieve a survivable collision. Returning your messenger to you, Doctor. Thought we should speak face to face. What? Oh, yeah. It was a good idea, but I guess I'm being fired again. You're absolutely sure it's 8,500 years old? Sure, sure, but that's not the interesting part. Pray tell, Dr. Stone. What could possibly be more interesting than an 8,500-year-old computer buried deep inside an asteroid? <laughs> the organic residue. I fail to see the fascination. There's some DNA from Amadi and from O'Hara when he picked up the dropped sample, but some of these other molecules... Yes? They're nucleic acid chains, but the nucleotides aren't the familiar ones. It's not the adenine, cytamine, guanine, thymine that comprise all the DNA on Earth. It's other bases making similar molecules. What does that mean? It means I'm pretty sure I'm looking at the genetic residue of an alien species here. The Centaurians? No, no. The ambassadors have DNA. Same four bases we've got. This is something very different with eight bases. Well, anyway. Uh, only you could shrug off the discovery of a new type of alien life. I'm more concerned with what the device is doing down there. Can you tell me that? From organic residue? I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. Go get your mechs down there working on that. If you need me, I'll be in here rewriting the books of abiogenesis and evolution. Take this toolbox and one of the N770s. Yes, Chief. Okay, helmet's on. Communications check. Sing something. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. All right. That bad. You ready, Tojo? Yes, Chief. All green. Hold on to the rail. There's about to be some wind. Yes, Chief. All personnel stand clear. All personnel stand clear. All personnel stand clear. Your life is about to change, Farah. There's nothing like being on the surface. No simulation. Nothing you can say to prepare you. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. All clear. Proceed with caution. Wow, it's so stark and so vast, without end. It's really something to go from four walls of floor and sealing your whole life out into this, isn't it? And the terrain, so smooth, and those hills, breathtaking. It used to be littered with boulders. We had to melt the surface to give it a structural integrity to handle our acceleration. With the acceleration we normally have, I could never have carried this. Actually, you'd have been blown off into space. The engines were pushing our world forward faster than gravity could pull you down. Wow, then I'm really glad the engines are off. Everything feels so easy. The automated rover took the actual engines out ahead of us. Those are enormous. Inertia will still be tricky with this smaller stuff when it's hard to judge the mass, so be careful. You're not as familiar with the low gravity as I am. You don't want to have an accident out here. Guess you'd know, Chief. 
took me years to work through all the issues my accident brought on. Still haunts me sometimes. Hey, what's that over there? Looks like something just exploded. Just a particle of interstellar dust. Remember, we're still going three quarters of the speed of light, even when we're not accelerating. Are we in danger? We'll only be out here a few hours, and we're really small targets. And most of the gas and dust is hitting the other side of Matilda. Until we turn over, we'd have to be incredibly unlucky. That impact looked like it was over the horizon, probably ten kilometers away. But it's one of the reasons we don't let people walk on the surface just for recreation. And it's why we can't bring Matilda into the Tal Ceti system itself, where the dust is far denser. I imagine flying through the middle of a system at this speed, it'd be like a constant barrage of nuclear weapons. Pretty much. Chief Flint? Yes, Mayor? The team working on the artifact found it's attached to a sort of a wire. A long wire, possibly all the way to the surface. How does that concern me? They've projected where it would reach the surface, and it's only a couple kilometers from where you're going. I need you to take some readings. Excuse me, Mayor, but this is a rescue operation. Every wasted minute could be the one that leads to Peters dying out there. Nobody's asking you to abandon Peters. You can place the engines first. When everything else is done, before you head back in, just take a few minutes to get me electromagnetic spectrum scans at the location I'm sending you. Latitude minus 41.3, longitude 6.77. Fine, please clear the channel and let us get on with the job. Doc, how is he? Who? My husband. Oh, uh, I guess Amadi's still unconscious. When did you last check on him? I, uh, well, I looked at his vitals this morning. Once? Uh, maybe. I can't believe how irresponsible you are, Doctor. You only have one patient right now, and you're totally neglecting him. What is there to do? He's just lying there unconscious. Not very interesting to look at. Terrible conversation almost. So you go off into your little office nook and spend your day doing something more fun instead of attending to your patient? I'll have you know, I have made the most incredible discovery today. The medical discovery of the century, if not the millennium. Sure. Meanwhile, your patient has been out for two days. You told me yesterday he'd almost certainly wake up yesterday. Hmm. Well, that's what I thought at the time, but you never really know how long it'll take with these things. Maybe he slipped into a coma. Well, why don't you come see? It's not a coma. His brain activity is actually unusually elevated. Huh, wasn't like that yesterday. Like a seizure? No, not that elevated. And it's coming down toward normal. I projected based on the rate of change there, his brain activity should be back to normal in uh, six hours. So I'll bet you that's when he wakes up. It better be. Or you might find yourself equally unconscious after I'm through with you. Hey, I should really report you for that threat, Flint. You've got a detective right here. Pin the report to his gown. I'm sure he'll deal with it when he wakes up. How's the fuel line test looking? 86%. Stable? Yes. That'll do. We can afford some waste since it's just a couple five-minute burns. Close it up. So what was that errand the mayor had for you? She was only talking to you. I couldn't hear her side of the conversation. Guess she's keeping it under wraps for the moment, not telling anyone she doesn't have to. Are you going to do it alone? No. Follow me. How am I supposed to help work on it if I don't know what it is? 
Oh, who cares if the meter wants secrecy? I'll fill you in. Mining section found a device, a sort of computer, nine kilometers down, and they dated it to 8,500 years ago. What? That's insane. I've seen some insane things in my time, but it's up there. Anyway, they found a wire coming out of it that they think might go all the way to the surface. And that's what we're looking for. That's all. Just an impossible wire from an impossible computer. That's all. Not impossible. Just very hard to explain at the moment. I'll agree not to submit my application for the mission under one condition. And what's that, Dad? You put me on the committee that chooses who goes. Then you couldn't volunteer. Conflict of interest. Exactly. Well, I suppose it wouldn't do any harm. I was having trouble deciding on those appointments anyway. Thanks, Renata. I need chances like this to participate in important decisions. It's a three-person committee, right? Yeah, that's what I've been leaning toward. Maybe pick someone who can evaluate their mental fitness and someone who can evaluate their ability to meet our scientific research goals? Hmm, maybe. Right up here. I don't see anything. You wouldn't. If it ended right at the surface, it'd be melted down now. And the coordinates might not be exact. Take a reading with your electromagnetic scanner. Well, there's something going on here, that's for sure. There's a big spike around 8 gigahertz. It looks like a highly focused directional beam dropped off just a step to the side. Beam of what? Play me the aura of representation. Here. Sounds like random static. I don't think it is. I'm already seeing patterns. Are you saying this is a transmission? I think so. And why else would the device have a wire to the surface with highly directional 8 gigahertz emission? Let's take a relay here so the communication section can get a steady feed of it. Maybe Marissa can figure out what it means. Shouldn't you get the mayor's permission before you bring another person into this? She'll say I should have, but this is too significant to hide and I don't want to argue with her right now. Easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission? Something like that. Okay, that's the relay planted. Now let's get back inside. I've got an itch I haven't been able to scratch all day in this suit. I admit I was being selfish. Just thinking about chasing adventure. It was a sort of a mad dream. Once it became more real, I would have understood it was wrong. If I survive this, I promise I won't volunteer for the exploratory mission. That's all I wanted to hear, for now anyway. How's it going over there, Tam? Some great progress. Chief Flint got the rockets placed to turn us around. We should be flipped over by tomorrow. It's gonna be weird feeling sideways gravity during those burns. You might not even notice, it doesn't take that much acceleration to get Matilda up to a velocity where she'll turn over in 12 hours. Once we're pointed in the right direction and restart the main engines, they say it'll be a matter of hours until we come up on you. That's where it'll get tricky. You'll have to rotate again and decelerate to try to catch me instead of smash me to bits. I believe Chief Flint will make it work somehow. Anyone can, it's her. So, how are you holding up? The hunger pangs have subsided. That's good. They told me to let you know you can drink more water now since we should be there pretty soon. To tell the truth, I've already been cheating a bit on the half liter ration. Have you been sleeping okay? Some nightmares. 
but not as bad as the one I face when I'm awake. Stay strong. There's just one more day to get through. Yeah. No matter what happens tomorrow, at least it'll be over. I'll be ready to do whatever part I can to help, which I'm afraid won't be much. I wonder if either of you would really care if I were gone. Dad, do you really have to do this tonight? I've spent the whole damn day in a spacesuit hooking up engines and running errands for a mayor, and I'm on my last nerve. And I'd rather be with my husband in medical right now. The doctor's useless. There's never a good time, is there? Haven't you both always been telling me you make time for family? Oh, for... Fine. Let's just pretend to like each other for ten minutes until we're done eating. This might be one of our last meals we eat together. Are you sick, Dad? No, I'm just thinking about leaving. I've failed here. Change of scenery might be for the best. <laughs> what? Where could you go? He's talking about the mission, the pod to Tau Ha! <laughs> you... Dad, volunteering to give everything up and go on a one-way mission to die alone for the benefit of humanity? I'm leaning toward it. I know my life hasn't gone to plan, and living in a world of 200 people, I've never been able to escape it. But at 68, I may finally have a first chance to get away for a fresh start. Well, it'd be a great opportunity for him to completely abandon his family again while convincing people he's trying to noble for it this time. And he's gonna die alone with nobody liking him anyway. So I guess it doesn't matter what world that's on. Yes, what is it? You wanted to know the moment your husband woke up? He just did. I'll be right there. (sighs) If I find out that you faked a call as an escape... Have fun, sis. See you tomorrow. How are you feeling, Arash? A bit of a headache. And hungry. (laughs) I know a dinner seat that just opened up, but it'd make your headache a lot worse. Don't think there'll be any further issues. I'm discharging him now if you want to take him home. Well, I'm sure he'll be safer in my care than yours. Careful, let me help. Ambassador. You wanted my help, Dr. Stone. Yes, Ambassador. I think you're the only one other than myself qualified for this job. A new alien species, you said? Help me sequence the, uh, not DNA, but whatever you want to call their genetic material. Then, let's try to derive a simulation from that of what these creatures may have looked like and see if we can even narrow down where their home planet could be based on their physical characteristics. A fascinating challenge. I am not sure if this can be done, but I will help. So, what have they discovered about the device while I've been out? The ambassador got the date correct. It's 8,500 years old. The sample you collected had ancient genetic material from an unknown alien species, and it's transmitting some sort of message somewhere. Kinda makes you wonder about those ancient aliens' crackpot conspiracy theories back on Earth. There's no reason to think they ever visited Earth, let alone did anything significant to Earth's history. It's a big solar system. A big solar system with a lot of asteroids. I wonder why they planted something in this one. It's not a big device except for the antenna. Maybe they planted them in thousands of asteroids. Or maybe they only wanted to track the ones that might become spaceships. There weren't many sized right for that task. And as far as we know, this is the only one with the special ore that's accelerated us so fast. 
their species is still out there listening. Our acceleration must have caught their attention by now. <sighs> Maybe these mysteries will become a little clearer in the morning. When I get to work analyzing the transmission. I'm sorry, Arash. It's been a long day. I gotta sleep. It's gonna be a big day tomorrow. Hopefully in a good way. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 9, Maneuvers. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerim. Mission Specialist Salish Peters is David Loftus. Mayor Renata Matumbo is Kathleen Lee. Apprentice Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerim. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. The mayor's father is Roger Arnold. Marcus Flint is Glenn Haskell. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Ambassador One is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Eric. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Special thanks to our Kickstarter backer, Sydney Umania. Sound effects and music, courtesy freesound.org, asoundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.